Greetings, true believers, and welcome to another enlightening episode of History of the Marvel Universe. In our previous video, we looked at how the young orphan named Aurora Munro grew up to become the powerful X-Man known as Storm. However, there was a point in time in which Aurora was deprived of her weather-manipulating powers. The mutant machine smith known as Forge, while contracted by the U.S. government, had developed a weapon which could suppress superhuman powers. The prototype for this weapon was obtained by Henry Peter Gyrick, a government agent and notorious critic of the superhuman and mutant community. Gyrick intended to use the device on Rogue, a former member of Mystique's Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, who had joined the X-Men. This distressed Forge as the weapon was untested and its side effects were unknown. When Gyrick pulled the trigger, Forge attempted to stop him by tackling him. This, however, caused his shot to hit Storm instead of his intended target. Forge felt responsible for what had happened and took it upon himself to nurse Aurora back to health. During their time together, the two mutants grew close and entered into a brief relationship. However, their dalliance ended when Storm learned of Forge's role in her depowering. Even without her mutant powers, Aurora was still a formidable opponent, and when the fire demon Surtur invaded the Earth, Aurora was one of several heroes to join the battle. This display impressed the trickster god Loki, who decided to use her in a revenge scheme after one of his plots was foiled by the X-Men and Alpha Flight. Loki abducted Aurora, mystically entrancing her and garbing her in Asgardian clothing. The new mutants, who Storm was staying with at the time, were also scattered across the realms and had their own individual adventures before reuniting. The God of Mischief then traveled to Nedavalir, the land of the dwarven blacksmiths who created the enchanted hammers Mjolnir and Stormbreaker. Loki commissioned Atri, the dwarven king, to create another hammer worthy of a god of thunder, which he did along with some help from the new mutant Cannonball. This new hammer, dubbed Stormcaster, gave Storm powers similar to that of Thor, thus transforming her into a weather-manipulating goddess once again. However, Loki's control over Storm faltered after he tricked her into attacking the X-Men who had come to rescue her. After badly injuring Wolverine with her new power, Aurora broke free of Loki's enchantment and saw through his lies. Loki attempted to convince Storm to stay in Asgard with him and rule as a goddess. However, not being one to allow herself to be manipulated, she destroyed and cast aside Stormcaster along with the power it yielded and returned to Earth with the X-Men and the New Mutants. Even without these powers, Aurora proved herself worthy of leading the X-Men by defeating Cyclops in one-on-one -on -one combat. And fortunately, Forge would eventually undo the damage his weapon had done. After being tricked by Forge's mystical nemesis, the Adversary, Storm and her one-time lover were trapped in an alternate dimension for a full year. While there, the two came to terms with the fact that they still had feelings for each other. Ultimately, Forge succeeded in using parts from his mechanical leg to construct a machine that restored Storm's powers. This allowed her to re-energize the portal back to their own Earth, and the two returned home. Despite her returned powers, this was not the end of Stormcaster, and we now jump forward several years to Norman Osborn's Siege on Asgard. During this event, a corrupted hero called the Sentry killed Loki and destroyed the city of Asgard, leaving it in ruins. After that, while digging through Asgard's remains, Thor discovered a box with Aurora's name engraved onto it. He brought the mysterious package to her and Aurora opened it to discover a repaired Stormcaster. It seems that Loki had left an enchantment on the hammer, as when Storm placed her hand on it, she once again transformed into a goddess of thunder and took to the sky. Thor gave chase, intending to free Aurora from Loki's enchantment, and the two thunder gods battled in mid-air. 
In the end, Storm was able to regain control of herself long enough to grip Mjolnir while it was still in Thor's grasp and use it to seemingly destroy Stormcaster once again. Some time after this, several of the X-Men, including Storm, were set up and arrested. During her imprisonment, Storm was placed into solitary confinement, which triggered her claustrophobia. While that was happening, a dark god called Uovu came to Uzuri, the Kenyan village where Ororo lived before joining the X-Men. Ainet, the priestess who raised Storm, was attacked and mortally wounded for refusing to join Uovu's death cult. Before she passed away, Ainet prayed, and both her prayer and Aurora's anguish resonated with Stormcaster, which had reformed itself in old Asgard. The Enchanted Hammer flew into Storm's grasp, transforming her once again, but this time without the corrupting influence of Loki's spell. After learning of Ainet's passing, Storm returned to Africa and battled Uovu. This battle is from a fairly recent book, so I recommend picking up X-Men Gold Volume 7 God War if you want to experience the whole thing. At the end of this conflict, however, Stormcaster was completely depleted of energy and turned to dust, and thus marked the end of Storm's Asgardian weapon. But thank you so much for watching this video about it, and if you enjoyed it, please leave a like, leave a comment, and share it on your favorite social media. Special thanks to the Patreon supporters who helped make this possible, and as always, the issues referenced in this video are listed in the description below if you would like to read them for yourself, as well as links to other places you can find me. So until next time, true believers, Excelsior!